going to the macro section now to us people tend to do macros a lot of times macros are done as marketing like for marketing reasons so in control macros and marketing they're kind of underneath the same heading they're both underneath marketing home first thing I want to do is go through the options with you for the macros and then we're going to come back and we're going to put what we learned together and actually create a macro so the first thing I want to do is let's go to there's two ways you can get to the macro section in control the first one is you can click on marketing home at the top or you can click on sales and marketing it's both going to get you to the same this one right here you can click on macro setup and then marketing home you can click on the macro setup here I typically come to this screen so um, let's go to macro setup okay over on the left hand side you'll notice that we've done uh, I'll collapse these right here so that you guys don't have to see everything that we've done but you'll notice that you have the ability to create several different types of macros so you can create a macro based on a company event an employee event an estimate an order or purchase order receiving documents so several different things that can call that you can create a macro for the first one that we're going to do is we'll do the one to email the invoice whenever the orders mark sale that's going to be an order macro so basically it's whatever you want to return in the end so if you want to return if you want to email yourself a list of customers you're going to do a company macro if you want to send out an estimate it's going to be an estimate macro so whatever your end result is whatever one of these options over on the left hand side that's the type of macro it's going to be now one thing to remember if you were going to set up the macro that automatically emailed the statements at the end of the month or the beginning of the month to customers most people they try to go underneath orders to create that macro but that's actually a company macro and the reason it's a company macro is because in the end you want an email to go to each company that has an outstanding balance okay so let's start by going to the order macro since that's kind of the most the most common one once I select the top uh, a category I can then select new macro okay and the simplest way I can explain the macro is you're telling the system that whenever X happens you want Y to be done so whenever something happens and that something can be an order station was changed an order was created a status was changed an order was edited anything that you can do in the system pretty much um, so you're saying that whenever this one thing happens you want this other thing to happen so one thing causes another one to happen okay so first thing we would do is we'd go through and we'd put our macro name and we can put in a longer description of exactly what the macro is intended to do okay so the two tabs here the main two tabs are your trigger tab and your action tab so your trigger tab is what causes the macro to fire or trigger and then the action tab is what you want to happen so you want an email you want a message to pop up on your screen you want a something to print out okay so on the trigger tab um, at the very top it says run this macro automatically so you'll notice that this option here run this macro automatically your choices are you can either run it automatically or you can set the macro to run on a schedule so let's say the example I told you about the statements being emailed out every month that particular macro you would run on a schedule so you would set it up to trigger every let's say the 30th of every month or the first of every month if you wanted something like an invoice to be emailed after an orders marked sale that would be done automatically okay so the options are automatic where the system does it by itself no no person has to interfere or the other option is you can run something manually or on a schedule okay and the reason why you might want to run something manually is if maybe there are certain customers that like to get their their invoices via email and there's certain customers that you like to mail the invoice to that would be one reason why you'd want to set up the macro to run manually and that just means the person at the computer has to click on a button over to the right hand side okay so if we decide to run a macro automatically 
Um, our options are we can set it to run on the server in the background. So basically what that means is if we want to send an email to someone automatically, so the order is marked to sale, we want the email to be sent. If we want that to take place on the server so that it doesn't interfere with anybody's work, basically if I'm in accounting, I change the status to sale and automatically in the background without me knowing the email is sent. Then I would check this option here. If I want to be in charge of, of sending the email, what would happen is if I uncheck this, it's going to be sent using my email options. And then if Bob marks an order to sell, Control is going to look at Bob's email options to see how to send that email to the customer. Okay? Most of the time, people will run a macro on the server in the background. All right, so the triggering event. There's two types of triggering events for a macro that's going to run automatically. The first one is a change event. So an example of a change event would be a new order created, order edited, order status change, order station change. So all of these things here, these are all of the things that can trigger a macro. Now, some customers call us and they want you want to create a macro that's more advanced, that's not one of these things listed here. Maybe an order was created 30 days ago and the salesperson is Bob and the balance outstanding is over a thousand. Something that's more advanced than just this one option right here. What we would do is you could set an indirect change event and you could write a SQL query. That's something that we would probably have to help you with. But typically, this is used only for doing something really advanced. Most of the things that customers want to do, you can use the order change event. So one thing to note here is because we started a new order macro, that's why your change event has to do with orders. If we had started a new estimate macro, these options here would all relate to estimates. So if we take a look at the option, the triggering event that happens for macros that are, ma that are manually run or run on a schedule, you can use the current order, and that just means um, whenever you save an order, that it would use that particular order. You can use a SQL query, which is something you'd have to write using SQL, or, oops, sorry, or you could use a saved query. This is typically what people are going to use, a saved query. And a saved query is just an advanced query. Allow this macro to appear in the menu and be manually run for an individual order. Whenever we go to an order, I'll show you this one. Okay, so the trigger is you're telling control that whenever this particular action happens or this event happens, that's what your trigger is. Now, your action is the result of that. So I kind of think of it as cause and effect. The cause is your trigger and the effect is going to be your action. So the action is the thing that you want to happen. By default, control adds the prompt to begin and the notify of completion to your actions. Now, sometimes you want stuff to happen on the server. And if something's happening on the server, you probably don't want the prompt to begin and the notify of completion because Whenever you mark that order sale, you want to go about and maybe go edit another order and go about your business. You don't want a box to pop up that you have to click on to actually get, you know, the box you have to click on to actually proceed and do something else in control. So the things that can happen in control is a trigger can cause another macro to fire. It can cause a station change, a status change. We could create a company macro. and I'll just kind of go through. The main ones that people create are going to be your activity. They'll create an activity on your calendar. It will create an email macro. Or it'll send a report. And you can send different types of reports. Okay? And sometimes macros, some people, they set them up to, for a macro to change a user-defined field. Okay? So, I've gone through all of the different options with macros. Well, what I'll do is let me just take a, I'll, I'll show you how an email macro, how that works. We'll add that. Okay. 
So an email macro, what control is asking for is it saying replace the to field with the email address of. So basically the person that the, that the email is going to, who do you want that to be? And these are just merge fields. So we can set it to be sent to the person that entered the order or estimate or service ticket. We can set it to the first, second, or third salesperson. We can set it to the company's first, second, or third salesperson. We could set it to send to the person who called about the invoice, the contact, the main contact on the invoice in the estimate. Or we could set it to be sent to the company billing and or primary address. Now typically whenever you send an invoice to your customer, most people want their macro to be sent to the company's billing contact. And it's just saying replace contact with company billing contact. Um, now these two options here, so we can either do this at the top or we could fill in someone's name here. So let's say I own a sign shop and every time an order gets below a certain margin I, or an estimate gets below a certain margin, I want that estimate emailed to me. Okay? So if your email is always going to go to the same person, this is when you'd want to enter in that person's email address instead of using the fields at the top. Okay? But if the person that the email goes to changes every time the macro is ran, that's when you want to use the options at the top. So you have the option to send to Carbon Copy, BCC. Um, here's where we would say order. And we would use our merge field to insert the order number. Order one, two, three is ready, ready to be picked up. So if this were a macro that is sent to the customer whenever, let's say your order is marked ready to be picked up, that's a station maybe, ready to be picked up, and you want an email to go to the customer. So it would say order one, two, three is ready to be picked up. And here you could say, dear Bob, your order is complete and ready to be picked up at, and then you could type in your store location or something like that. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and let's actually start creating the macro that we want to do. The very first one that I'm going to do is an order macro that triggers on the station, the status change to sale, and it's going to email out an invoice. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this macro that I started. Okay, so in the very end what we want is we want the email to be sent to or an invoice to be emailed to the customer. So an invoice has to do with order, so this is going to be an order macro. So new macro. And I'll call this email invoice when um, on sale. Okay, and email Okay, so an email is sent to the billing contact when an order is marked sale. That's the purpose of this macro. So our trigger, I want my trigger because I don't want it to disturb me. I want it to automatically run on the background in the, on the server. So I'm going to leave this option. My order change event is going to be an order status change to now, the difference between order status change is that, that means any time it's changed. But this one right here, whenever I select order status changed to, I can specify which station. So I'm going to say whenever it's changed to sale. Okay, so that's my trigger. That's what's going to fire my macro. Now, what I want the macro to do is I don't want it to prompt anyone, so I'll delete that. I want it to email an invoice to the customer. So I'm going to come down here. Now this is this is where some a little bit it's a little bit that, that clear. Um, most people see email macro and they want they want to use that one. But because we want to email a report, we need to go down to report macro and the report is a crystal report. So this is the one we're going to add. Now if we were just sending an email and it was just going to have text in it, we would use email macro. But because we want to send a report 
to someone, we're going to use the report macro crystal. So I'll add that. I'll also get rid of this notify of completion. I don't want that because I'm going to assume that my email is always sent. Once you test it one time, you're, you're pretty good and you don't have to be notified of it. Okay, so report macro, our action name just says report macro. If we wanted this to save, let's say we're sending a invoice for order one, two, three. If we want an activity, something that shows on that activity tab of an order, if we want that to show that we sent an email to the customer, we can check this option right here. Okay, so on the general tab, I'll just say, um, this is saying menu item name, we can just put um, invoice report, that's fine. security right we could put a description that's not really necessary the print option so the options here are going to be the quick preview quick print quick email and quick save because we want this to email we have to click on quick email okay our file location so the difference between an on-drive report and a system report is an on-drive report is a custom report so if you guys have called implementation and we've customized a report that maybe has, it's not our standard report, so maybe has some different fields on it or things kind of moved around a little bit, you're going to find your file here. If you click on Browse, it's going to open up the Reports window and it's going to be in this folder here. Now, I want to use the standard invoice, so I'm going to use a system report. And you could do one of two things. You can click on the drop-down or you can click on this little box here. I tend to click on the little box. And um, this may be a, a question that you'll have to email implementation about, but you'll notice that whenever you get to orders, you'll notice that there's a lot of different reports here. And that's just because we offer customers multiple types of invoices. So it really depends on what invoice you want to send. Our standard invoice is the Invoice Master 01. I'm going to click on that one since that one's the standard. Okay, and my report name is here. So I'm finished with the general tab, but I want to go to the options tab because I still haven't said who I want the email to go to. I still haven't put in a subject or anything like that. Okay, so this window should look familiar. This is the same window you see whenever you go to preview or print or email or save or an invoice. Um, regularly. So what we want to do is we want to email this. Okay, and the person we want to email to, since this person's name, since the person that's going to be sent the email, it's going to change for each customer. What we need to do is use a merge field. So I'm going to put my cursor in the to field. I'll click the drop down here. And I want it to be sent to the company's accounting or billing contact. Okay, so company dot accounting contact email. That's where I want it to be sent. Okay, now just to make sure my macro works, what I would do for the first couple, maybe the first day or two, or the first couple times you send out the email, I would copy myself on it, just so that I see what the customer is getting. Okay, our subject. Let's say we want our subject to say invoice, and then the invoice number or maybe order one, two, three has been invoiced. Okay, so we'll do order. Now we want our merge field again because on every order that invoice number is going to be different. So we'll click the drop down here, order dot order number has been invoiced. And then maybe we want to put a message to the, to the customer. So we would say, we would use our merge field again. So we would, let's say we want to use the accounting contact's first name. So we want to say Bob or Sally or whatever the person, her name is. So Sally, comma, please see the attached invoice for order number, and then once again, you can use your merge fields here, order number, 
one, two, three, or whatever the, open this up. And then you can put thanks, accounts receivable, or whatever it is that you want to put. Okay. Now the next thing we probably want to set is going to be the file name. So up at the top we've set the subject line of the email. We probably want to modify the actual attachment name. So this is what the attachment's name is going to be. And we'll say order, we'll put the order number. And then a lot of times people want to put the description. So we'll do order, order number, space, dash, oops. so before the dot, we'll do space, dash, space, so it'll say order number one, two, three, dash, grand opening banners. We'll throw our description in there. Okay. We can close this. And the only other thing that we need to take a look at, or we don't want to save the invoice, so we don't have to worry about that. We can, let's say we don't want to show line item uh, parts. We don't want to show some of these options at the bottom. Okay. So we'd save this. And that's it. So that is how we create a macro that automatically sends an invoice when an order is marked sale. So is there any part of that that you guys find? I find that if you try to sit down and do it yourself at first, that there's some things that you wouldn't you wouldn't understand, but I found whenever I first started learning control that once I saw someone do it and they kind of explained what some of the options were, then everything made a little more sense. Now, the other thing that we can do is, remember there's this option down here to also allow this macro to appear in the menu and be manually run. If we, oops, let me edit this, and I'll check this option. And whenever we go to, it, I might need to close control and reopen in order for you to see this, but I'll try. If you go to, if you pull up any order, okay, I'll pull up order 1133. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see this new option that says Run Macro. And whenever I click on the drop-down, there's the macro that we just created. Now, the way that I got that, to show here was on our macro, I checked the option at the bottom that says also allow this macro to appear in the menu and be manually run for an individual order. You should say order there. So the reason why I would want to check that box is whenever, let's say the customer calls and they said, Lori, I know you sent that invoice to me, but I can't find it anywhere. Can you please resend it? All that I have to do is come over here and click email invoice on sale and it's going to automatically trigger. It's going to run that macro and it's going to trigger.
Um, so the other macro is the one that's created the contact. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the um, activity manager, but the activity manager is it's basically it's kind of like a calendar. Think of your Outlook calendar in control. The benefit of having the calendar in control is that you can link it to companies and orders and estimates. So you can put, anytime you talk to a customer about something, you can tie, like you can put in notes what you've said, and you can tie that activity to a particular order, estimate, or company. Okay, so for future reference, you can always go back and say, oh, look, this is why we discounted that order because we had this conversation, blah, 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 and you have all that, that information. Some customers, they ask us, they, maybe their salespeople aren't really good at following up on estimates, so they want something to remind them to follow up, and the best way to do that in control is to create a contact activity. And the reason for that is because you can set a contact activity to pop up at a certain time and remind you to do something. So it's similar to the option that pops up in Outlook where you click on snooze or dismiss. It's just a reminder. Okay, so in order to get something, and right now it looks like I'm, I'm looking at four different people's activity manager. Let me look at my calendar. So I'm logged in as the system administrator. So this, this is my calendar here. So in order to get an activity to automatically appear here, what we need to do is we need to create a macro. So our macro is we're going to go to marketing home, just like normal. We're going to go to macro setup. Okay. Over on the left, this is going to be trigger, triggered by an estimate, and that contact activity is going to be linked to an estimate. So we need to create an estimate macro. And I'm going to set this one, estimate, follow up. And we already have one call that, so I'll call, it, I'll call this one too. So create a contact activity two days after an estimate is created. Okay. So our trigger, once again, I'm gonna, I want this to run on the background. Our trigger is going to be any new estimate. Now notice how our options changed here because we're on an estimate macro. Okay. Now if I wanted to put this on the menu, I could, but it's going to do the same. It would, you'd basically be doing the exact same thing over again because this is automatically going to create that activity. So, okay, our activity is going to be a new estimate. So every time a new estimate is saved, we want a contact activity macro to fire. So we're going to click on Add here, and then I'm going to remove these two because we don't need the prompt to begin and then notify on completion. Okay. So our contact activity macro, I always just leave the name there. Um, record activity of action upon completion. I, I have a tendency to want to check this. Some, some customers don't want it. I just like to know, I just like to be able to go into my activities list and see that that macro fired and the date it was fired and all that. So I tend to check it. Okay, so it says modify contact activity template. So we're going to click on that one. And you're going to notice this is exactly what you see whenever you create a new contact activity on your activity manager. So the activity is going to be created on my calendar. And for the, I'm going to set my reminder to, let's say, 15 minutes, just so that it pops up and reminds me. My description is going to be follow, follow up call, follow up call. And then I will set this to, let's say I get in at 8 o'clock in the morning. Let's say I want it to show on my calendar at 8.30 for 30 minutes. So every day I'll put aside 30 minutes to follow up on previous estimates. And for this particular estimate, one of the options on the left-hand side, if I don't complete this activity, so if I don't call the customer, come back in control and mark that I've called the customer, my activity is going to show on tomorrow's calendar. And tomorrow if I don't call them and complete the activity, the, so the reminder is going to keep on rolling over until you actually complete it. I like that option, so I'm going to click on that checkbox.
Now, if you wanted to, you don't have to set the activity as for a certain time. You can just say, so you have your, con you have your activity manager, and at the top you have a section, and at the bottom you have all the different times. So let's say you don't want to put this contact at a certain time because you don't necessarily have to call them at 8.30. Um, it's really whenever you have time during that day. One thing that you can do is you can say, only schedule the date, and that means it's timeless. It's, so it's just going to show at the top of your, your um, calendar. So if you created five estimates today, you're going to have five different contact activities. And then let's say I only get to call three of those people. So the two that I don't complete are going to roll over to tomorrow's calendar. And I'll show you the difference between the timed activity and the, the time list activity. So we'll click OK here. Okay. And what this says is it says replace employee with, and if we wanted to, so basically I want this to be set on whose calendar. Um, I'm going to set it on the primary salesperson's calendar. So I want the activity to go to the primary salesperson's activity, uh, uh, calendar, sorry. Replace order estimate with the selected order estimate. We definitely want that. So basically that's just going to merge the estimate into the estimate field. It's going to tell us what our estimate number will uh, is. Same thing for company. Replace contact with, so for our contact, we wanted to show, instead of the primary or the billing contact, we wanted to show the ordered by contact. Now, one reason why you would want, some, some customers use Activity Manager to track um, outstanding customers with an outstanding balance over 60 days or over 90 days. And what they'll do is they'll replace the contact with the billing contact for the company because they want to call and talk to the person that's paying the bills. Um, but in this case, we want to talk to the person that placed the order because they know about the order. Okay? So this one right here says replace scheduled date with available work assignment date. Now, all those words, they're confusing, I understand. But what they mean is whenever this estimate is created, how many days after it's created do you want the activity to be put on your calendar? I always, some customers do seven, I'm just going to do two. You can do whatever number you want, and it's going to be after the date. So what this mumbo jumbo means is, this little section down here, is that once our estimate is created, I want the activity to be put on my calendar two days after it's created. Okay? And that is it. So I'm finished my macro. I'll save this. Okay. Let's take a look back at. I said I'd show you kind of the difference between the timeless activity. Oops. Sorry. I clicked on. I need to go to my calendar. Okay. So notice these are timeless activities, and these are activities that are set for a certain time. So most salespeople they would prefer. I know some of our salespeople, whenever they need to talk to someone but they don't necessarily have a, like a set appointment, they'll, we use control internally, and they will set their activities to be timeless, and that way it's there to remind them. But if they don't get to the call, you know, it'll show up on tomorrow's calendar, and they know, you know, if they have 30 minutes free, they just start calling their people on their, the list up here at the top. Okay, so that is, those are the main two one thing I would recommend is, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the wiki, our uh, wiki site. There are probably eight different macros, the most common macros. You can find the steps to create, the exact steps to create those macros on our wiki site. So just in case you forgot, our wiki is going to be controlwiki.com. Oh, SeriousWiki. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So SeriousWiki. All that you really have to do is if you type in macro, you're going to see examples of macros. Um, macro trigger changes. Um, how to automate your backups to run at night, that's a macro. How to create an email 
for estimate follow-up, how to email customer when order marked built. If you go to the next page, the two that I went over are in here, how to create an, estimate, an email for estimate follow-up, how to email invoices on orders and save automatically, and then the same thing manually, how to email account statements. So there's, there's a lot of um, step, and these things are step by step. Uh, one of our, we have a, a customer who's he's pretty much a power user. He lives in Virginia, and he's gone and he's kind of helped us. He's put in some of the macros that he uses, and it, this is step by step exactly what needs to happen. And uh, and he uses them, so the steps definitely work. 